What we're doing right now is called a resting metabolic rate test to measure resting metabolism. The purpose of this test is to be, be able to give guidance to nutritional information that doesn't cause nutritional deficiencies. So there's so many people today with attempts to want to exercise to be healthy aren't eating the value of calories just to meet resting rate, much less expenditures. So they end up failing in their ability to improve their met per minute. This is just another avenue of testing to bring credibility to why we need to eat this many calories and at the same time what percent of those calories come from carbs, proteins, and fats. Okay. What we're doing right now is a VO2 peak test and this is a test that measures the efficiency of the delivery and muscular system's ability to deliver oxygen and at the same time the muscles consume it. The reason it's called a VO2 peak is we're working up to the point where the respiratory quotient is 1-0, which is the doorway of anaerobic metabolism. This is the point where the athlete's ability to use fat for energy complete, completely stops. It's just to warm up the muscles. Yeah. At any time, Clay, if you don't feel like you can do it, you grab the handles and I'm going to shut it down. But I'm trying to push you for the highest score you can get. Fifteen five, Clay, steadily going up. Fifteen nine. Got a one twenty five heart rate. It's gonna be a slow trot, but it's gonna be a trot. You ahead and start trot. It's gonna be a slow trot. You're gonna say it feels like I'm doing nothing. That's okay. Stay up right near the front like that. There you go. is coming down. Okay, that's good. Yeah. He's starting to do more work, use more muscle mass, and doing that is causing the respiratory quotient to drop. That's good. The faster you go, the lower that drops, the longer you're going to be doing it. So that's just getting to one. The respiratory quotient is what you want to do. Trying to get to one. And that's going to be the point where all fat utilization completely ceases for everybody. The little old lady or the, or the, or the world champion. All right, Nathan, we're closing. 33 right. 9, Carol. Steadily going up. Every time we put demand, you keep responding. You're an animal. 48 5. You're going to have a good score today. Keep pushing yourself. We don't see people doing this. All of our people are in the 20s. Fifty milliliters, and he's still respiratory quotient. Look at him handling it. Okay? Look at it. Respiratory quotient's not going up. Mike Craven's looking at this saying, man, I'm putting the work on him, but he's handling it. That's, that's the athlete. That's what y'all's training has done. This training has adapted him to be able to do that. We got a 185 heart rate. Closing in on 10 minutes. I'm going to tell you this next thing, Nate. All right. Stay up near the front. That's the way to work. All right, at 10 minutes. Hang in there, big man. You grab the handles if you can't do it. You are an animal. Keep pushing. You're going to break 60. You're going to break 60 if you want it. Now this is something to mind. How important is it to one individual over another? Yeah. He's hurt right now. This ain't easy stuff, but he's pushing. 54! You're going to break 60. 54, 8! Five points away. So it's no feeling to this. It's measurable. 55, 4! He's going to break 60. 190. 56.4. Listen to his mandatory right now. The carbon dioxide getting blown off. See you over there. Now when this gets to 1-0, the best in the world can't sustain this. Yeah. 
Way to push yourself. Keep going after it, Clay. You're one point away. Grab the handles if you can't do it. Hang in there. You're one point away, Clay. Bingo. Grab the handles. Grab the handles and stay with your seat. Good job. Good job, man. Way to push yourself. Way to push yourself. Camp classes. And they're doing low, they're doing limited muscle group sit-ups that don't use the muscles that y'all do walking. And they're telling them to do it up above the lactic threshold, which means it's nothing but a football agility movement. They don't know that that high intensity work is not allowing physiological change to better fat burning. They're judging it as a good workout because of what? Because it's hard. And they're with a bunch of other people who are going through the same hard stuff. So what does it mean when Clay's fat burning wasn't as a, his, so he's, he's got a better bet score, but his fat burning wasn't as, as efficient as mine. Well, think of, think of it like this. That's, That's just the, genetic? No, with, no, no, no. You can train to improve the rate of fat being burned. That's what we're talking about. Now, again, how you set that up is exercise prescription. But the, but the idea is you want the best endurance athletes have two things. Well, three things. They have high VO2s, they have high lactic thresholds, and they're efficient. Now, that means they're, they're efficient. You might be able to run a, a six-minute mile pace on a lower VO2, and he's running a six-minute mile pace at a higher VO2, where you're more efficient. You might, have, you might not run with your arms going across your body. Okay. You, you got more, better biomechanics, and that okay. needs to be inefficient. Okay. Well, the same thing with being able to use more fat. If we're going to do any event that allows you to have to be out there long, you want to be a good fat burner so you can spare glycogen. So when people bonk or they hit the wall, can, uh, can that come from poor nutrition? Sure it can. But can it also come from doing too much speed work and, you don't, and you're not efficient at using fat at high intensities? See, so it could be the difference. Okay, we've got the results back now from Virginia Runner. And looking at Clay, Greg, and Nate, we've got some differences in their aerobic strength and some differences in things that are going to be relative to them training. An example, Clay tested out at 57.2 milliliters and he reached his lactic threshold at a heart rate of 189. Greg tested out at 48 milliliters and reached his lactic threshold at 186. Nate tested out at 65.6 milliliters, the highest score, and his lactic threshold heart rate was 175. Now if you look at the age predicted formulas that would be given out for prescription to aerobic work, they all exceeded the work capacity of the formula. And, and what this means is if they can train with higher heart rates without the production of lactic acid, all that can do is improve cardiac output. So again, we shouldn't be using formulas when we can train exact. A, a very interesting characteristic that I'm going to show compared to Nate versus Greg is Nate, when he was at a heart rate of 128, he was us, utilizing 26 milliliters, 0.3, that's how much oxygen utilization he, he was at, 26.3, at a heart rate of 128, and he was burning 7.5 calories from fat. Now that utilization of fat at, at that heart rate for that oxygen cost was 100%. His body has the ability at that oxygen utilization to still use a high rate of fat for energy. Now compare that to Greg who was at 30 milliliters, which is 4 milliliters more. Greg's heart was 156 beats a minute. Greg was burning 9.7 calories out of 13 total calories. Now again, when you look at Nate going to 39 milliliters, his heart rate was 142, and even at 39 milliliters, he was burning 10.5 calories from fat, which his total calories were 10.5. Now, comparing those two, it shows that Nate's way more efficient in his body's ability to use fat, and to use fat at higher training rates. So, so again, one of the goals of long-term long, um, endurance is to train the muscle to be more fuel efficient at using fat for energy, which spares muscle glycogen. So if you've got two people running the same distance, even if they're using the same amount of oxygen, it doesn't mean that they're, they're using the same amount of fat.
can you train people that can learn to be more efficient at using fat by exercise prescription? Of course you can. And this is the whole reason for the testing, is to say in a yearly program, how do we set up the program based on you as a unique, unique individual that can teach your body through physiological change to be better at using more fat at higher and higher running speeds? And that's everything about program design. So the best runners that have the highest VO2 steady rate, they have the most glycogen left at the end of the race. And it's, it's only because their body's more efficient at using fat for energy.